Hello everyone! Today I'm going to do settings for Procreate for beginners. As long as you have these settings set up, you can do anything with digital art and draw or illustration using your iPad today. So I think this video will be useful not only for those who want to start drawing as a hobby, but also for designers who want to draw rough sketches for their work. I myself started using Procreate about 2 years ago, but this has literally changed my life and that's also why I made this video in the hopes that more people in the same field will use this up. Today I will explain what to do with your settings for Procreate while drawing this girl with afro hair. Alright, first open settings from the icon at the top left and tap it. I will explain what you have to do from the top. We have light interface at the top. What this does is that when you turn it on, the background turns white in color. I prefer black, so I always turn it off. When you turn on the right hand interface, the bar gets placed on the right side. When you turn it off, it will be on the left side. What this does is, for instance, it lets you draw by adjusting the thickness and the opacity of your brush. Here, the upper one is for thickness and the lower one is for opacity. But it's about whether you want to adjust the right side or the left side. I'm used to doing it on the left side, so I keep it off. Next, brush cursor. Right now, it's on, but I'm going to turn it off and start coloring. I'm going to choose a brush with a color that will be obvious to see, but yeah, you can color in the way you want and it will be like this. So what happens if you turn it on? What it does is that just before you start coloring, it shows you the shape and thickness of your brush in translucent. So this is what brush cursor is about. This is really useful, so I find it better to keep it on. Alright, let's go to the next one. There is this thing called Project Canvas, but this is for when you connect with a display or airplay, so I always turn it off. Next, I set Rapid Undo Delay to 0.65 seconds and Selection Mask Visibility to 25%. Below that, there is Connect Third Party Stylus, which is for when you use a different brand's pen like Wacom. Next, Edit Pressure Curve. You can adjust the sensitivity of writing pressure with this curve here. There is gesture controls at the very bottom, but here you can change many things and we'll mainly focus on this part in today's video. I will explain how I set mine from top to bottom in order, but for smudge at the very top, I keep everything off. In the same way, I don't have anything on for the erase, as well as assisted drawing option. For eyedropper, I have the tap square option on. When you have it on, go back to the canvas and color. Then tap the square mark in the middle on the left side. It enables you to get access to the eyedropper. Just like this, you can choose a color to change the brush color to. I often use the eyedropper tool, so I definitely suggest turning it on. Alright, next is the quick shape. For this one, keep your drawing option on at the very button. I'm going to show you how this works. Quick shape is about making shapes such as triangles, rectangles, circles, and over shapes that you draw turn into the perfect shape. For instance, even when you draw a circle roughly like this, as we kept the drawing option on beforehand, it enables you to create a seamless object. Next is the quick menu. For this one as well, I keep the option at the bear button. About quick menu, it's basically a collection of buttons that give you a quick access to functions you use very often. 
I set these buttons to brushes, not all, but almost all of them, so I can easily access brushes that I use very often. How can we set this up? Well, you display the quick menu by holding the screen down, hold the button you want to change down as well. Then you get to choose one of the functions you want to add from the list. Right now, I have brushes, but you can also have the eyedropper tool and blurring tool if you use them often as well. Here is the list of functions I have. Pencil brush which is 6B. The second one is coloring brush. The third one is a linear pencil which is the pencil I customize by myself. But it's similar to a studio pencil which is often used when you want to draw a nice outlines and such. The last one is a soft brush. It's kind of a blurring brush, but I often use it when I want to color backgrounds. These two on the right side are copy and paste. I often use copy and paste functions so by setting them here, I can easily access them. Okay, next is about full screen. I have tap with four fingers on. When you tap anywhere on the screen with four fingers, you can view your work full screen like this. When you tap on the screen with four fingers again, it will undo. Next is clear layer. I don't have any option turned on for the clear layer category. Next, we have copy and paste. For this one, I have the swipe with three fingers option turned on. I have copy and paste for the quick menu as mentioned earlier, but you can also copy and paste by swiping down with three fingers. For instance, let me draw something quick. I'm going to draw a hut. Then when you want to duplicate or copy and paste this layer, you can just swipe down from top with three fingers as well. When you do this, these options pop up. So you can choose copy and paste from here. So I just need to repeat the same process and choose paste. As you can see, this layer has been added as a new layer here. Next will be the last one. I don't have anything set up for layer select, so on to general at the very bottom. I have rotate with pinch zoom option turned on. So the Apple one which says disable touch actions is turn off, but the one below is turn on. What this is about is that it lets you draw by rotating your work. So when it's off, the canvas is fixed, not letting you rotate your work. Alright, that was pretty much how I have my sitting setup in general. I drew the girl with afro hair I showed you earlier, only with the brushes I set up with quick menu. I'm going to show you the rough process right now. I usually use a 6B pencil brush tool for drawing my first draft. I use this tool really often. You can easily draw lines like these, and even when you draw while having it laid on its side, it helps bring out such a great quality of work, so I definitely recommend using the 6B pencil tool. Once you're done with your draft using the 6B pencil, lower the opacity and I'm going to start drawing the outline on top of that. And this is when the linear pencil comes into play, or a studio pen or a brush pen. I can draw like this. Once you're done with the outline, it should look something like this. Next, I'm going to start coloring the skin, but I use a coloring brush. It's not too hard, but not too soft, and it's perfect for coloring and solid colors. Just like this, we keep coloring, and this is what it looks like when it's complete. Once you color the skin, we will color the shadows and highlights. And this is when you use a soft brush. It's this one. A soft brush makes the surroundings kind of blur, 
so it helps blend in easily with other colors around it. This is what it looks like once you color all the shadows. When you add highlights using a soft brush on top of that, it makes the painting look more three-dimensional. And when you turn on the other color layers, it will look like this. And for your most parts, you can just use either a soft brush or a coloring brush to color. Next is the head part. For this part, Use a pencil brush or other brushes to color by adding different colors on top of each other. The base color is yellow, and on top of that, you would add orange, purple, and so on. Once you color the base color using a soft brush, I can draw her curly hair by using the 6B pencil tool. Using a thin pencil of different colors helps the girl appear more three-dimensional like this. For the lighter layer on top, I set the drawing mode screen. But you can try any here and see which one you like the best. I also have a 3 minute video of me drawing this picture, so check out the link in the description box if you want to watch the whole process. Alright, that's it for today. I've talked about settings for Procreate, and going over them really helps you paint quickly. And I hope you remember how to set the quick menu in particular to enjoy drawing. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe. Bye bye.